Welcome back to another roundup of nature, science, and environmental policy news from around the world. I'm Alice Ford. Stay tuned for some exciting discoveries in science, the risks you may face by riding the subway, benefits about plant-based diets, wetlands, PFAs, and much more. There is life under the Antarctic ice shelf. A surprise to researchers who thought nothing could live in this atmosphere devoid of sunlight and food. Now, researchers discovered the sponges and organisms living on a rock below a 900 meter thick ice shelf while studying the sea ice. Footage appears to show 16 sponges accompanied by 22 unidentified animals that could include barnacles. Now, it's the first time that immobile life like these creatures has been found beneath an Antarctic ice sheet hundreds of miles from known food sources, and it really challenges our understanding of how organisms can live in environments far from sunlight, according to the team of biologists. Could we be using plastic waste to make roads? Well, that's just what they're doing in Ghana, India, and small pockets throughout the United States and the UK, with plans to create more roads made of melted down plastic waste mixed with asphalt and concrete a few new companies are actually starting to make this plastic material, which so far has held up better than a typical asphalt road and may even last longer. This new use of plastic waste could help fight the global plastic waste problem and create paved roadways in places that couldn't previously afford them. Now, globally, there are more than 420 million tons of plastic produced annually, and only around 75% of that is thrown away, 25% recycled, contaminating the world's environment. Now the ocean absorbs about 11 million tons of plastic garbage every year and harms plenty of marine life. Do you ride the subway? Well, you may wanna keep that mask on even after the pandemic ends if you do. A new study by researchers at New York University found that subway air in the subways in the metro areas of New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, and Boston is heavily polluted and could be making passengers and subway workers more susceptible to lung cancer, asthma, and even heart disease. Now, many of these stations are currently undergoing upgrades to air filtration systems in the subway and in the subway cars, but until it's completed, I would keep your mask on while underground. What we eat isn't just important for our overall health, but it's important for the overall health of our planet. A new report says that plant-based diets are crucial to saving wildlife. And that's because the global food system is the biggest destroyer of the natural world. From clear cutting, burning, and habitat destruction, agriculture is the main threat to 86% of the 28,000 threatened species on the planet. Without change, biodiversity loss will continue at a very rapid pace. Now this report focused on three solutions. One, a shift to plant-based foods as cattle, sheep, and other livestock have big impacts on destroying habitat. Number two, returning farmland to its natural state by rewilding areas and also rotating crops. And three, farming in a less intensive and damaging way by accepting lower yields. Now factory farming needs to change and I hope our governments can work with farm stakeholders to make some of these changes. And what about you? Are you ready to commit to going plant-based even just one day a week? Not only is it better for you, but it will help our planet too. Wetlands are disappearing three times faster than forests are being lost. And they're among the most biodiverse ecosystems on the planet. On par with coral reefs and rainforests, they supply vital habitat and are the biological supermarkets for wildlife. They reduce the likelihood of flooding by soaking up excess water from swollen rivers. They filter pollutants from groundwater before it enters aquifers. And they're one of the most effective natural carbon storage systems on the planet. For us humans, they prevent flooding, they mitigate climate change, and according to the Ramsar Scientific and Technical Review Panel, wetlands store 35% of the world's land-based carbon, despite covering just 9% of its surface. But 87% of the world's wetlands have been lost over the last 300 years. And most of this loss has happened over the last 120 years. Now, in response in the 1970s, nations banded together and they ratified the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands. But over the last 50 years since then, it really hasn't led to much effective protection and wetlands have continued to disappear. 
Now, according to the outlook, the major driving forces behind wetland loss are climate change, population increase, urbanization, and changing consumption patterns like the shifts towards a more meat-heavy diet, which requires clearing and cultivation of larger areas of land. So to fix this, we all need to do more, and it starts with our local governments, zoning offices, and conservation departments. Find out what you can do in your local community. The state of Minnesota is proposing a statewide plan to battle the forever chemical grouping of PFAs that cause cancer and pollute the state's rivers, lakes, and drinking water. Now, this plan could start by defining the entire class of PFAs as hazardous substances. This would require disclosure from all companies using the chemicals and if you didn't know, PFAs are in many food packaging and takeout containers, makeup, cleaning supplies, fabric stain protectors for sofas and furniture, car polishes, and even dental floss. And less than 1% have been tested for toxicity. Over the years, PFAs have leaked into drinking water and wells, into lakes, and can even be found in most people's blood. Do you guys know how sustainable your home is? Well, it's hard to know how we can be more sustainable, without knowing the baseline of how our current home carbon footprint is. And now there's a website where you can measure yours. It's called carbonfootprint.com. And once you're there, all you have to do is grab your utility bills, click on home and see how your house ranks on sustainability. And then it will tell you how you can do better. I'd love to know if you guys check this out, what upgrades you might enact in your own home in the future if you can. Our last story today comes from Mexico. Now, Mexico was once a climate leader, making big claims during the Paris Climate Accord, but now they're betting big on coal and they're shifting their focus away from clean energy. President Andre Manuel Lopez Obrador, properly known as AMLO, has unveiled plans to buy nearly 2 million tons of thermal coal from small in-country producers. He also plans to reactivate a pair of coal-fired plants on the Texas border, which were being wound down as natural gas and renewables took a more prominent role in Mexico's energy mix. Now, it's believed he's doing this to keep energy production and development internally in Mexico, but it's a stark change to a country that had big climate goals just a few years back. And if you guys need something to watch this week, you can check out Burton's One World, which is available on Amazon Prime and on Burton.com, or Arbor's Crossing the Grain documentary, which streams on the Arbor Collective. And if you guys want to help spread the word on climate and nature news, then don't forget to share this channel with a friend. Don't forget to smash that like button either before you go. I'll be sharing more topics on green living, energy, and nature in the coming weeks, and I hope to see you right here.